Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Who's Farner Vikings Facebook Live. My name is Kathy Frum. I'm one of the full-time educators with SVP Worldwide. Sorry about that, guys. Wrong camera. Got a sneak peek of what I'm going to show you in a few minutes. So again, welcome. Uh, come on in. Uh, have a seat. And uh, we will get started here in just a minute. As a reminder, I have two very helpful people in the background working uh, to read through the chat for me and give me questions. Uh, they would be Amy and Meredith. And thank you, girls, for um, really helping me out today. I appreciate it very much. If you have questions during the, this Facebook Live, go ahead and put them in the chat. And Meredith and Amy will monitor that chat and forward questions on to me so I can see them. Unfortunately, I can't see your chat as it happens. So they will feed that chat information to you. So hopefully everybody's here and we can get started. So today's topic is specialty embroidery techniques. Everyone can put an embroidery on something like my logo on my shirt here. So um, that's just putting an embroidery on something else. But our machines can do so much more. And there are a lot of specialty techniques, but you may not be aware of how some of them work. So I'm going to show you today just how some of those work. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to come over and we're going to wake up my designer up at two because it decided to take a little nap while we were um, waiting for Facebook to start. I'm on the entry screen, the home screen, you might call it, of the Designer Epic 2. Now, our Designer Ruby 90 and our Designer Sapphire 85 all have this joyous advisor. However, if you do not have a Wi-Fi enabled Who's Farno Viking machine, you are not without help because you can put the Joyous Advisor app right on your cell phone and you have basically the same information at your hand on your phone or your tablet. Doesn't matter if it's an iPhone or an Android, the app works on both. You have the same information and knowledge. So if you're working on a designer uh, Topaz 40 or Topaz 50 or a J35 or one of our older um, designer rubies or designer diamonds, you can still get help for all these specialty techniques. Just download the Joyous Advisor app at your uh, Play, Google Play Store or your Apple Store. All right, so I don't want anyone to feel left out. So my Joyous Advisor is already set for embroidery. You can see right here it's in it's in turquoise. I know it's I'm back a little bit far, but I want you to be able to see the whole screen, and then I will zoom up a little bit further. Right below embroidery are different techniques. And this is a carousel. Our screens are capacitive touch screens. So that means we can pinch and pull and swipe up or down, left or right to find different features of the machine. So what I'm gonna start with today is felting embroidery. You'll notice that three types of felting, let me zoom up for you just a tad, there you go three types of felting showed up under felting embroidery. Uh, felting freestanding, felting embroidery with multiple layers, and felting embroidery doing a single layer. Well, today we're gonna do a single layer felting embroidery, so I'm gonna tap that choice, and this is why I had you zoomed out a bit. There you go. Here are our directions for working with the felting embroidery single layer. Each step tells you what you need to do to prepare. So first off, single layer felting embroideries are created by distressing a single layer fabric with the felting needles. Denim is a great fabric choice for this technique, while distressed polar fleece will give an embossed effect. I think I have to make a new scarf for winter this year and do some embossing with my felting needles on it. The directions continue and give you the list of materials that you need and how to prepare for the felting. I'm gonna show you a picture of the kit in just a moment and how to get it set up, selecting your embroidery, stitching it out, 
and pre um, preparing your hoop and finally removing your hoop. I'm going to minimize this for a minute. Doing everything left-handed here, so a little challenging for me. Again, I'm going to zoom. I'm going to take you in a little bit and up a tad. There we go. I wanted to show you that anytime you choose a specialty embroidery technique through the Joyous Advisor, it filters out all of the designs that are appropriate for that technique. That's a great time saver. And yes, on the phone app, you can even view the designs on your, if you have a Wi-Fi enabled machine, you can actually view those designs on the app and send them to your machine from the app. So on my designer Epic 2, I have four available felting single layer designs. Getting ready here to switch over to my Sapphire 85, which is already set up for felting. Since I only have an hour with you, I have to make use of all my time. I told you I would show you the felting kit. This is one of the felting kits. This particular box is the felting kit that fits on the Designer Sapphire 85 and other machines that take a green bobbin. So those are typically group seven and a couple group eight machines. But if you have a group nine machine or the original Epic or the Designer Ruby 90, you would be looking, you would be shopping for this box. This box takes, works with all the machines that take the blue bobbin. For me, that's the easiest way to remember which bobbin. There's a couple things that are just slightly uh, lined up differently between those two machines. So there are two felting kits, one for each group of machine. Now, uh, Meredith and Amy have, have or they will post the part numbers for these items um, in the description of today's Facebook Live. To save time, I've already brought up the design. I just touched it by loading it through the Joyce Advisor on the Designer Sapphire 85, and I am ready to do felting. I'm going to start the machine so you can see just what it does. And I'm going to see if I can get a little bit closer so you can really see that in action. So felting, whether you're doing it with the single layer felting or with a fiber or fabric, it doesn't use any thread. I have zero thread in my machine and I do not have anything in my bobbin. Instead, there's a little uh, filler cup that takes the place of a bobbin in the machine while the machine is doing the felting. You know, we have that wonderful bobbin sensor in our machines and that bobbin sensor would be going off if we didn't have anything in there. So there's like a little cup that's in my bobbin area today. And then to protect your fingers while you're embroidering, there's this little device that screws onto the ankle. Oops, I'm sorry guys. I go the other way, there we go. This takes the place of your ankle on the machine. I'm gonna stop the machine so you can see that up close. I know it's a little bit uh, difficult to see because it's clear, but behind that clear uh, guard is a felting needle. Now a felting needle doesn't look like any other regular needle. I'm gonna see if it will show up here, if I can hold it. Well, come on, let's come back a little bit. There we go. So it's really short and it is sharp and it will hurt if you stab yourself with it. There's no point to it, but it is very durable because it has to penetrate the fibers of your project or push fiber down through your fabric to have a felted design. So I'm gonna set that down out of harm's way. Each felting kit comes with a spare needle inserter. 
So one of the wonderful gray needle inserters so you can safely insert that little short needle in your project. All right, and through the magic of television, I'm gonna show you what this particular felting design looks like. This is a chambray shirt that I have. And I gotta zoom out so you can see it. There you go. Maybe not quite that far. There you go. So it's a chambray shirt and I already did one side of it. And the other side will look just like it, except that I placed it up closer um, to, the, to the chest at the top. But it forms, it just distresses your fabric. Great way to dress up denim or, or any other sort of item. Now you can also do felting by placing a piece of um, felt or fiber over top of your area where you're gonna put your felting design. So this is just a piece of uh, scrap felt and I would lay that down and then run the design and it would push the fibers of the felt through to the right side. So you might've noticed that I hooped inside out and some of you probably thought that I was crazy, but felting works by pushing fibers from the wrong side to the right side. So we have to work backwards and inside out. The other thing that you can use for felting, and this works great for freestanding felting, in you would hoop with a stabilizer, like a water-soluble stabilizer. And by the way, for the distressing felting, no stabilizers needed whatsoever. So quick and easy. But to do a freestanding or um, something with a lot of dimension, you can take some roving. And so this is actually yarn that I just separated the yarn and combed it. I have a friend who does weaving and spinning, so I asked her where I can buy a set of like carding paddles that she uses. And she said, well, she goes truthfully, she goes, we use dog brushes. So she sent me to PetSmart and I bought a set of dog brushes and that's what I use to comb out um, yarn. So the looser the weave on the yarn, the twist, the better it is it makes better fiber and you only need a few yards of yarn to make a whole lot of fluff. I mean, I'm going to, I'm never going to run out of yarn to make into roving. So here's my little sheep. Let's see if I can get him in camera for you. It says Mary had a little lamb. And this sheep, is actually one of the designs out of our MySonet library. So it's available to use if you have a Wi-Fi enabled machine and a paid MySonet subscription, or anyone can purchase our beautiful Who's Front of Viking designs at MySonet.com. Our designs range in price from one to $8. So they're very reasonable. So the design that I purchased is the lamb. And then I added um, a little red work girl and the lettering through the MySonet software to create that felted sign. So Meredith and Amy, if you have any questions, I'm going to come over so I can see the chat here in just a minute. So let's see. Um, So the question is, do you need an embroidery machine for these techniques or can I do some of them on the Opal 690Q? That's a really good question. And mo the techniques here and the kits are all designed to work in embroidery mode with embroidery designs, but you can do felting by hand. So you may be able to work out a free motion type of quilting and doing felt felting that way. I've personally never tried it, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. Just set your machine up for free motion quilting, but you're going to use the felting kit because you do need the guard and the plate cover and the bobbin filler. You need the needle, everything that comes in that kit, you would just use it free motion and you would have to direct your fabric. I'm not a very good driver of fabric. I'm a good car driver, but not a good fabric driver. So I don't drive fabric very well. 
All right, and we had a request to the, see the sheep up closer. So let me, I'll just bring it over to me. It's probably easier. So we can see that little sheep. He actually has some thread details as well. So I did those in reverse as well, meaning that I filled my bobbin with my embroidery thread and stitched those upside down. It was a test to see if I could make it work, and it sure worked. All righty. I think we're going to move over uh, to another technique. And we'll come back over here to my designer epic too. And come back to the joyous advisor. And let's find another technique to play with. So. I want to look at yarn embellished embroidery. There are three types of yarn embellished embroidery in this category, and they include yarn couching freestanding, yarn couching on fabric, and specialty bob and case. So today I'm going to demonstrate to you the yarn couching on fabric and how that is set up for the machine. So there are some items that come in the kit or yarn couching, and that box looks like this. I'll have to show it to you a little further away so you can see. And that's called the uh, Yarn Couching Feet Set. Again, our helpers, Amy and Meredith, will put that part number for you in the chat. Part number is the same for all machines. The one exception is there are these little legs or arms, you might call them, that attach behind your machine. You probably didn't realize that if you lift up the back handle of any of our Who's Farnham Viking machines, there's a little uh, ledge in there that you can put this type of an, an arm in, and it can be used to carry our, our thread or our yarn in this case. It also works to attach our eight thread spool rack to the machine. If you have our Designer Epic 2 or our Designer Ruby 90 or our, the original Designer Epic, you'll need to purchase a different set of legs that are bigger that go with that machine because the body style is different. So the legs that come in the kit will fit all of our topazes. It'll fit our Designer Sapphire 85. It'll fit our older rubies and diamonds. In the kit, you do get some written directions, because I know some of you like written directions. You also have a CD-ROM with directions, inspiration, and a few yarn couching designs. And you have two feet. So the yarn couching feet look a little bit like the R foot, R as in red foot, that comes with all of our Husqvarna Viking embroidery machines. It, that R foot can also be used for free motion work. And I do believe that you could truly do this free motion as well. You just have to have more talent than I have. The reason why there are two feet in the box, I'm going to put, see if I can put something behind here so you can better see that. There's a hole in the foot. And there are two sizes because you can use different sizes of yarn to do the yarn couching. I'm going to just swivel my camera over here so you can see the butt of the machine as well as me. I'm going to thread the yarn through the hole in the foot. It's in the bottom. And to do that, thankfully, the kit comes with a nice needle or a nice looper threader has a clear, like a fish line, and then a nice sturdy handle. And I'm, I'm gonna poke the handle down from the top side of the foot and pull that loop through. So the tail is caught, there we go. It is much easier to thread the foot before you snap the foot onto the machine. So for, for this setup, let me come back here to my screen. So I can show you that once again, 
My machine is very intelligent and it filtered out the built-in designs that are for yarn couching on fabric. I'm gonna select design number three and by touching and holding that, it will load it onto my screen. I'm gonna minimize my direction so I can check what size hoop it selected. It shows a 150 by 150 hoop. I don't happen to have one of those handy, but I do have a 200 by 200 millimeter hoop prepared for you today. So simple change of my hoop. And to bring back my directions, I can just tap on that book icon again and bring my directions back on screen. So I have placed my yarn through my foot. I have selected my embroidery design. And although you can't see it because of I don't have a reverse camera. I have threaded, here's my ball of yarn. Bring that up front so you can see it. I have threaded my yarn through my thread guide, so right behind the handle of the machine. And I pulled out some extra yarn so that it was free flowing. I have my machine threaded with rayon embroidery thread and snapping on the foot, making sure that I have a little tail of yarn ready to go. Yeah, let me just take up the slack on, on my yarn a little bit and so that you can see what's happening. I'm going to touch go, which will move me over to my embroidery screen. Because I selected yarn couching, my machine is smart enough. It knows I'm using the floating foot. My arm is calibrating. I will attach the hoop. Make sure I don't have anything in the way. And I'm going to bring you into the machine. So we're going to hit touch our start. And let me zoom up for you because I don't think you can see very well. Give you a little angle there. So you can see that my yarn is just coming down in front of the foot. There you go, that looks like a good angle. Now, I am gonna stop the machine for my own safety and just trim my starter yarn, just trim that close and then resume stitching. So a question in the chat is, does the machine also automatically filter my Sonet designs by technique? When you are connected uh, to the internet on your machine and you're searching the My Sonet library, you can indeed uh, filter by even something as simple as a technique or a style. If you're looking for butterflies or hearts or um, insects, you can search by that, but you can also search by any of our techniques. So if you're looking for yarn couching designs, you can filter right at the machine on a Wi-Fi enabled machine. So that's an excellent question. So I have a stop command in the design um, and I'm just going to go ahead and trim that yarn because it's gonna move a little bit but I'm, I'm not gonna bore you with stitching with the rest of that. I'll move that foot out of the way so you can just see how cool that is. It actually uses a narrow little zigzag to do the stitching. I'm gonna come back to you and show you, this is a yarn couching design that also has some regular embroidery just done with the rayon embroidery thread and then yarn couching done on top. So it can be a mixed media type of project. You can have thread, embroidery thread rather, as well as yarn on top of that. So this is a finished example of a yarn couching design that is stitched on fabric. If you recall, when I was choosing yarn couching from the machine, there was a choice for freestanding yarn couching. So freestanding yarn couching is yarn couching, um, you would do the yarn couching on a water-soluble stabilizer because you need to 
remove the stabilizer in order for the finished product to be freestanding. So this design is a freestanding design. And I'm gonna hold this up to you. So this section with nine circles is, the, is one repeat of the design. This is from the MySonet library. It is also an endless design, which means I can connect it to another set of nine circles and continue on. And I stitched enough. I used one whole skein of, of a red heart yarn and I made myself a little scarf. It's really quite warm in, this, in, uh, in the winter time. So it's a nice, nice scarf, easy to make. Um, to do this, I did use the Aqua Magic Stabilizer. I basically rolled out two layers of it as long as I thought I would want a scarf to be and just hooped it end to end to end. I could use the endless hoop or I could use one of our metal hoops or I could use a traditional hoop. Easiest one to use, I would say first off would be the, end, the metal hoop and second off would be the endless hoop. Those are my preferences for hoops for doing something end to end and freestanding. All righty, so back to questions. And please just, if you have a question, just put it in the chat and I will periodically check on those questions. Um, let's see, can you do yarn couching on cards? I don't see why not. They're fairly open stitches. It's just a loose zigzag stitch. In fact, when you look at the design on screen, it kind of doesn't look very nice, but it turns out beautifully when you use yarn on it. So I would think that it would work well on cardstock. Again, it's all about the proper stabilizer um, to embroider on paper or cardstock. And can you do lettering? I have not used a font in the software that is yarn couching, but I do believe there is one now on my Sonet um, library. I'll have to check on that. Um, Meredith or Amy, we can take that back and um, get an answer for um, this question for sure. You could certainly do it freehand if you can do free motion embroidery and, and do your own letter shaping. You could certainly do it free motion, okay? Alrighty. So next off, let's see. We'll just go back here to the picture of our yarn couching for just a moment while I share with you some additional techniques. My next topic is cut work and cut work needles. But I don't have a third embroidery machine here to have that set up. So, and since I'm working by myself at my home, um, I don't have a helper to like change everything out for me. I, I need a little elf to help me out. But I do want to talk about another wonderful technique built into our machines, which is cut work embroidery. And let me show you what all is built into our machines with Cutwork Embroidery. I'm showing you on the Epic 2. However, these same things are available working the same way in the Joyous Advisor on our Designer Sapphire 85 and our Designer Ruby 90. Just have to tell the machine I'm, I'm done playing with that design. So if I go into my Joyce Advisor, I'm still in embroidery, and tap over to Cutwork Embroidery, again, I have three options of design style. I have doing cutwork with scissors. It's kind of the old fashioned way, but you can cut out the fabric with scissors, or I can do cutwork with cutwork needles, or I can do cutwork that are eyelets. Eyelets are little round holes with a satin stitch around it to form an eyelet. I'm going to choose the cutwork needles and I will clear my work now. I got a little ahead of myself there. And just, so my project already loaded with my directions on using the cutwork needles. So cutwork needles are needles that don't have eyes in them, sort of like the felting needles, but instead of a sharp point with a little twist to penetrate 
fiber through fabric. There we go. This is where I wanted to show you. They have like a little cutting blade on them. So we get way up into this set of directions here. This is showing you a regular needle versus a cutwork needle. Now the cutwork needle kit comes with a set of four color-coded needles. They're color-coded red, yellow, um, green, and blue. And your design will tell you which needle to put in when. Most designs do use all four needles. And it's important that you um, keep the needle in the right slot. Those slots are numbered on the package, one, two, three, four, because each of the needles has a different angle of cutting blade at the base of the needle. Think about our embroidery designs work a lot um, like a CNC machine or on an XY axis. So they go left, right, up, down, and sideways, all directions. And as they form in stitches or designs, we have to move along those different directions. So there are four cutting angles in the cutwork needle set. Each time you are to change a needle, it will tell you. Your machine will stop and tell you. Here's, here's an example here. Replace the cutwork needle with a different color cutwork needle according to the color block list. It shows up just like your thread list. So no worries. It's uh, difficult to make a mistake with that. Again, the cutwork needle kit comes with one of your um, needle inserter tools to make it safe to change those needles because those little blades are indeed sharp. It also comes with a few designs. Now, cutwork needles, or cutwork designs rather, um, often don't need any stabilizer behind it when it's finished. So my choice is to use a water soluble stabilizer um, underneath the hoop, or in the hoop rather. Throughout the cutwork process, you'll do some stitching of, with thread to form an outline, and then you'll insert your cutwork needles to cut the fabric away from inside, or if you're doing it the old-fashioned way, you would use scissors. And then you need to embroider again, but you're going to remove that stabilizer you initially hooped with your fabric in your cutwork. So you need to put another layer underneath your hoop, just slip an extra layer underneath your hoop uh, to continue doing the cutwork embroidery so you have some support for your edge stitches. My favorite stabilizer to use for that purpose, for that layer underneath, is our Dissolve Away Max stabilizer. And it is a clear, thick plastic type. It's not plastic, but it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of a of, of plastic um, stabilizer. It is, if I can find my beginning, here we go. So it is transparent, but it's quite thick. If you don't have the Dissolve Away Max, you might want to use two layers of one of our other water-soluble stabilizers. And I have a little storage tip for you because in certain climates, it's either going to be extremely dry or extremely humid. And in Ohio, we can have everything. So store all of your water-soluble stabilizers in a zip top bag so that your stabilizer stays flexible. I once left a piece of water-soluble stabilizer out, the film type out in the air for like a while, and it was so stiff it crackled and broke. So, And then the opposite is if you're having a lot of humidity, um, it could get kind of tacky. So you've got to dry it out a little bit. So those are my stabilizer tips for you. And then I'm going to show you some cutwork samples. This first one is one of the designs built into the machine. And again, the machine filters out for all cutwork designs. And here is an open heart that is replaced by thread. So this is a very large space to be cutwork. And that heart would just collapse if it didn't have some structure. So all the structure was created with thread. Now, because it's gonna be seen on both sides, you wanna make sure that you put matching bobbin thread in your machine when you do that 
step of the cutwork design so that you have a very nice appearance um, because it is a lace type, very open design. It's kind of a straight stitch with a little running zigzag over top of it. Let me check the questions here. Um, when the cutwork needle is on, do you replace the bobbin with a bobbin without thread? Um, when you're using the cutwork needle, you can just leave your regular bobbin in. It won't actually make any stitches. So you, that way your bobbin sensor won't go off. If you have the felting kit, however, I would use the little round disc that comes with it to replace your bobbin. So but you could put an empty bobbin in there too. It wouldn't make any difference. All right. And a more traditional style of cut work is, is something like this. This is uh, a dresser scarf. This particular design is built into all of our current machines, and it was featured in our uh, Designer Ruby Deluxe or Royale. I'm not sure how many generations it goes back, but it's a beautiful, lovely design. I did it on some linen, little scallop stitch at the edge, but this is a much more traditional style of cut work. Some of you may um, have grown up with dresser scarves and doilies done in cut work. So cut work can have a very traditional feeling, but cut work can also be very modern. This project, I'm sure you've seen this project before in our marketing. Um, it is done in red in our marketing ads, but this project and all the designs are built in to our designer Epic 2, our original designer Epic, and our designer uh, Ruby 90. So this is a large majestic hoop design. So it's done in two halves and the design is cut work, but the cut work's a little different. There's no satin stitching to hold, um, to go around the edges. Instead, there's straight stitching around the designs and that straight stitching holds a fabric underneath it and fills in the gaps. Now, if you were making a purse or a bag, which this is, you wouldn't want everything in your purse or bag to fall out through your cutwork holes, would you? So that's the purpose of putting a fabric behind. It's a lot like the reverse applique technique. Again, those project directions can be found right built into your machine. Alrighty, so let's come back and let me show you a couple other techniques that are special techniques. The cut work that is the reverse, has the um, fabric behind it, like I said, is a lot like reverse applique. And so this is a little sample of reverse applique. Again, doing applique is built into our machines in our specialty embroidery techniques. And this may make it a little easier to understand how that cut work was done on the bag. The applique fabric was actually put under the hoop after the cutout was made of the star shape. And then satin stitching was um, done over the edge and a second layer of stabilizer was put underneath the fabric as well to support the stitches. I did base that in place. Um, that will help the fabric from shifting while you are stitching. Oh boy, say that a few times fast. So keep it in place so it doesn't move. So let's come back to our Joyous Advisor once again and come over to our applique. And applique embroidery. We have several variations of applique. So the, the sample I just showed you was that reverse applique with a covered edge, but we also can do it with a raw edge applique. And we have um, a traditional applique. Applique is, a, is something we get a lot of questions about, uh, as a, a, especially with new embroiderers. They may not be comfortable with how it works. So using the directions that are built right into the machine, take you step by step 
on how to do that. So this is a covered edge applique. Again, it gives you your list of materials, how to prep your machine, selecting your embroideries, and doing the actual stitch up. So this shows you step by step that you do a placement line and place your fabric, you stitch again and trim, and then complete the design. So to make it a little easier on you, I, sure, can you guys, Amy and uh, Meredith, for some reason, I cannot see myself anymore. So I don't know if I have a camera issue. All right. So please hang tight for just a moment. I'm going to switch you back over so you can watch my machine while I check a few things and make sure that nothing is, uh, is wrong here with my equipment. The wonders of live TV. Hmm. Well, I seem to have lost my face camera. So we will make do. I'm going to come back over here to my Designer Epic 2 camera and use it. Sorry about that, guys. I'm not sure what happened. Everything worked well in our test run. Um, all right. So the, I was wanted to better explain the steps for doing the um, applique. So on this sample, I stitched just the placement line and then I laid my fabric, just a scrap of fabric over my placement line and stitched again to hold it in place. And then I cut away the excess fabric and my favorite scissors for cutting away um, applique fabric are indeed applique scissors. They have this wonderful duck bill that keeps you from cutting the bottom fabric while you're trimming around your edges. They come in both right-handed and left-handed. I am right-handed, but a few months ago, one of my one of my um, educators, educator buddies, said, "You know, I own both left and right-handed because sometimes you've got to like turn your scissors over and cut around. And if you have the left-handed ones and you're right-handed, you can do that much easier." I'm like, "That is wonderful." I went out and bought a pair of left-handed applique scissors and they are great for that purpose. Once you have trimmed, then you're ready to finish off the design. And this design had a little um, bit of design in the middle as well as the satin stitch around the edge of that applique. So that's a, that's a quick tutorial on how applique um, actually works, traditional applique. And I have nice towel to share with you. There we go. It's a little bit better of a view. Uh, I like to do applique embroideries on towels because some towels like this one have a very bumpy texture. It's like up, down, up, down. It's not a flat terry or like a flower set towel. So using applique takes all the worry out of the bumpiness of this particular style of terry. I did um, add some uh, knockdown stitches around the shape of my pineapple here to further mat down any of the little ridges, just a little bit, about three eighths of an inch or so around the outside of my design. I, I stitched those knockdowns with one of the greens that matched um, my towel, and you can't really even tell them unless you look close up. So applique designs are great to do on terry cloth. And you can create the knockdown stitches in your MySonet software, or even in our previous version, um, Premiere Plus 2 allowed you to do knockdown stitches as well. Okay, I'm going to check on my camera, see if it's back working. And it is not. Hmm. So... We will make this work, folks. Thank you for sticking with me as we work through our challenges. And the next thing I want to show you 
is something called thread velvet. So thread velvet is located under, whoops, sorry. It'd help if I showed you what I'm looking at. Sorry about that, guys. Um, surface embroidery. So in the surface embroidery, we have a couple of different techniques. And I think I'm gonna show you the foam embroidery first. So foam embroidery, though the designs for foam embroidery are digitized just a bit differently. And there are four of them in our designer Epic 2. Some machines may not have as many. I'm just gonna bring this one up on screen to show you. And I'm gonna hide my panel of designs. There we go. So em embroidery that is specifically digitized to work with foam. And when we're talking about foam, we are talking about like the crafting foam. It comes in different thicknesses, uh, two millimeter, three millimeter. Um, I would think most of the embroideries, two and three millimeter would be the appropriate thickness. They now have some very thick uh, crafting type of foam, um, but I would stick with the thinner. The designs are digitized with extra long satin stitches to accommodate the thickness of the foam. And what the foam does, it enhances the embroidery. So let me come back over here for you. Here is that design stitched out. And if I tip it at an angle, I think you can kind of see that it is very dimensional. Under each of these little flower pods is foam. And in fact, I kept a couple pieces of the foam from a small flower so you could see what happens. When you are stitching out a foam design, it will typically do um, a little bit of outline work so you know where to lay your foam onto the design. You lay your foam on the design and then the machine will tack it down, much like an applique, but you leave everything in place. You don't trim anything away. Trim anything away. The machine will do all the satin stitching and complete the design. And when the design is removed from the hoop, then you can very easily pop off your little foam pieces, and then you have your foam embroidery design. Once in a while, you might have a little bit of foam that kind of peeks through your stitches. The finishing touch on doing foam embroidery is to use a, a steam iron. So you want a lot of steam going in your iron and hold it about three to four inches above the embroidery on the top side. Don't actually touch it, but hold it up three or four inches and, and use some good steam and that foam will just shrink down a little bit and all of your satin stitches will cover your foam and be wonderful. It is machine washable and dryable. I would dry it on low temperature if you're going to put it in the dryer. I usually air dry anything with um, foam embroidery on it. Great way to add some embellishment. And there are additional designs um, in the MySonet library as well as in our software in our super designs and in our fonts. Wait a minute, I may have misspoke. In our fonts, we do have um, a couple of foam fonts available for you to stitch out. So that's, that's another technique that's built in. Did you know you could do so many things with your embroidery machine? So that was one of the three types of surface embroidery that you can do. Another one, just have to move my samples around since I'm working with a different camera, is thread velvet. So thread velvet is, there's a lot of thread velvet designs and not every thread velvet design is 100% velvetized. Many of them are mixed stitches. As you can see, there's a lot of choices here on the screen, but what's common with all thread velvet is that the portion that is being uh, created for the velvet, there we go, has multiple layers of stitching one on top of the other. So it builds up a really thick 
uh, line of satin stitching. It kind of looks a little like foam embroidery when you are stitching it out. And you can stitch out the colors with more than one thread color or use all the same thread color. It's really your personal preference as to what you like best and what look you, you want. You swing around here. Let me try to go back a tad. There you go. Now you can see my, my hoop. Sorry, the light is not the best. But this design is all thread velvet except for these little loops here and here. And it doesn't come out looking like this. It'll come out looking like a satin stitch. And, oh, let's see here. Here's my special tool. We sell a, a very special kind of seam ripper at our um, retail stores. So you can go to your local uh, sewing machine dealer or your local gallery store and pick up one of these who's Farno Viking um, seam rippers. It looks like a surgical seam ripper, which is basically what it is. It comes with a protective cap. But there is a blade on it that is replaceable. In fact, the seam ripper comes with three blades in it. So you're going to install that blade. But that curved point, that curved side is very sharp. So to open up thread velvet work, I should have left one of these um, opened, unopened. You just take your seam ripper and you slice down the middle. I do it a little at a time, not going too deep because I don't want to cut all the way through my fabric, but you want to cut down to both of your layers. This design was stitched with a lighter color on top of a darker color. So I knew I had to cut down till I got to the darker embroidery. So you just, I like to leave it in the hoop when I'm cutting it because it provides a lot of um, structure and stability. And I just do it gently a little bit at a time on a nice uh, secure flat surface. I like to use my, um, rotary cutting board underneath when I do that. And then if you spray a little bit of water on top of what you're doing your thread velvet on and then hold the steam iron above it, it'll kind of fluff it up and make it look like a chenille. So that's a pretty cool technique as well. Let me put that one back here and come back and check our questions. Um, let's see. Uh, question, is this kids craft foam or specific foam for embroidery? There is a very specific foam um, that one of the embroidery companies makes that you can purchase, um, but you can use kids craft foam as well. Sometimes the kids craft foam does not break away as quickly and easily as the embroidery foam does. So if you can find the embroidery foam, I recommend uh, choosing that. In a pinch, I've used the kids craft foam. And a side note on that foam, you don't have to match the color exactly with your thread. Um, it does come in assorted colors, but your thread will cover the color of the foam. So, you know, if you can only get white or black, you should be okay with that too. All right. Okay. And we have a few minutes left. So I want to show you that other technique that is in the Joyous Advisor under our surface embroidery, and that is fringe embroidery. Fringe embroidery is a lot of fun. And again, it filters out. So we have, looks like six designs available in this particular machine. Fringe embroidery will again stitch with long satin stitches. Whoops. try to hold that up for you. So this is this is not fringed yet, but you can see that these stitches are extremely long. And there's a couple colors to it to give it dimension and depth. Not every fringe embroidery is made up with multiple colors. This one happens to be. Once the embroidery is done, you're going to turn it over and you can easily see bobbin thread. This is the white bobbin thread. I'm going to take my handy dandy surgical seam ripper and I'm going to slice through those bobbin threads and pull up all the loose thread from behind. So 
turn that to the side so you can see that I've pulled all of my top thread from behind. The only bobbin thread you really see on the back is the bobbin thread for the rest of the design. It's, it's all trimmed away here. And once again, a spritz with a little water and holding a steam iron over the top will really enhance um, the dimensions of fringe embroidery. There's also a flower built into the Epic. And these flowers remind me of bachelor buttons. These little purple guys, they remind me of bachelor buttons. So you can see better on this sample to hold down the fringe in place, you have to have an anchor in the middle or along the edge. So in these little flowers, the center is done with a fill pattern and that encases the edge of the loop so they can't come out. I can pull my loops out from the edge, but not the middle. On the inside of the heart, there was a satin stitch right here. And that was, that was going over top of these loose threads to hold those in place. So that's what keeps it from coming out. This sample also has a thread velvet flower, but this thread velvet flower was done, it was done with two layers of satin stitch, but, but both in the same color. So even though I only used one thread color, it's very rich. You can kind of see some changes in color just as how the light hits it. And that's just the nature of our beautiful Robeson Anton embroidery threads. Meredith or Amy, do we have any additional questions? Um, well, oh, somebody would like to see the back of the fringe. Sure, let me um, grab those again. Sorry, I didn't catch that question right away. So here's the uncut design on the back. Bring that up nice and close. So I've not yet cut that white bobbin thread. And on this sample, get the back side for you. You can see I have indeed cut that bobbin thread. So I've cut that loose. And then from the outside edge, you probably can even still see a little bit of needle penetrations from where I pulled those threads, those loops out. So I hope that helps. So uh, can fringe embroidery be done on the Ruby Deluxe? Absolutely. Fringe embroidery can be done on any of our embroidery machines, beginning with our Jade 35. You just need to have a design that is has fringe technique in it. That is the deciding factor. And again, we do have, it's just hoping my other camera would work again for me. Um, we do have, um, oh, let me check a cable there. Nope. Still not working. All right. We'll finish up like this. Um, you just need to have a fringe and border design. In the MySonet software, in our uh, super designs, there are a few fringe designs. There's a little girl with ponytails, and her ponytails are fringe. That's really fun. I believe that I saw last Halloween a witch's broom, and so the broom was fringy. So there are a number of designs out there for purchase on um, the non-Wi-Fi machines through my Sonet library. Um, would you sew the stem before the flower? I love the red one. Okay, so typically um, in a fringe embroidery design, all of the background embroidery is done first. So all of the, um, like the heart was probably done first, but on this green stem, it actually goes over top of the fringe, but it it, it does not, um, machine can, can make it in here to do that. So this color was the last color on this particular design. On the, uh, what I call the bachelor button flowers, this design's also built into the Epic uh, Two and the designer Ruby 90. Um, it stitched the stems first, 
because they're underneath the edges of the flower. But I do believe it did the light green last because that was on top and it would not interfere with the fringe design. Just depends on how the design was digitized and what layers need to happen with it. All righty. So it looks like I am just about out of time and I wish you could come back and see my face, but unfortunately, I don't think that's going to happen. Let me try one more thing. See if I can come back and say goodbye to you guys. Nope. All righty. Um, if there are no more questions, um, I want to remind you that our next Who's Front of Viking Facebook Live is on October 5th with Karen Charles. She will be going through directional and sashiko type stitches. Next, my next my Sonet Facebook Live is the following week, October 12th, with Mickey Hudson. And she's going to be touching on my Sonet. Her program is My Sonet 101, more than just software. So I'm excited to see um, both of those. My fellow educators, Karen Charles and Mickey Hudson, make sure you tune in to see them as as always, today's event was recorded and will be available shortly on Facebook and on YouTube for those of you who may not have social media. Thank you and have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.